we here at the Joe Blow Movie Network work together as a group. As we put together these little videos, aka content, that not only entertain but inform, at least we try. We combined ideas to create these videos that we all hope you all enjoy. We not only stop, but we also collaborate, but most importantly, listen. And it was that motto that was instilled into us at a very young age. It was back in the summer of 1990 when a classic hook was given an early 90s upgrade by a pioneering new rapper who rocked the mic, like a vandal who lit up the stage and, of course, waxed a chump like a candle. It may be hard to believe now, but Vanilla Ice was perhaps the biggest musical act in the world for a brief moment. But like many artists of that time, their flame burns bright, but seems to be extinguished rather quickly. So what has this rapper been doing for the past 30 years? Yo VIP, let's kick it and find out what the fuck happened to Vanilla Ice. Oh yeah, cat. words of wisdom. Drop that zero and get with the hero. <laughs> Excuse me? But to truly understand what the f happened to Vanilla Ice, we must begin at the beginning and the beginning began when he was born on his birthday, 1967, Texas. Contrary to popular belief, Vanilla Ice is not actually his birth name. When this guy was a baby, they named him Robert Matthew Van Winkle. He says that as a child traveling between Dallas and Miami, he grew an affinity for rap music due to the poetic nature of the lyrics and the rhyming words. This led to a teenage Robert Van Winkle taking up breakdancing, and his group of friends soon gave him the nickname Vanilla, as he was the only white kid in the crew, and Vanilla is white. At first, he didn't like the nickname Vanilla, even though it worked on so many levels, because, you know, he's white and his last name is Van Winkle Vanilla Van, Van, you know. But once he combined the name Vanilla with his signature move, the ice, his lifelong alias was born. Vanilla Ice. Vanilla Ice would begin performing in rap battles at parties where his rhyming skills would impress anyone within earshot. But surprisingly enough, it would be Motocross that would bring a young Vanilla Ice to early glory. As in 1985, he won three Motocross championships, but an unfortunate accident where he broke his ankle would make him realize that he did not want to do that professionally and turned his focus back to breakdancing, performing around local malls, because that's where all the cool kids used to be. Eventually, his friends persuaded him to take his rapping street performing talents to the stage, where he would earn rave reviews for his open mic performance that led to a steady gig at a local nightclub, where he would open for such iconic acts as N.W.A., Public Enemy, M.C. Hammer, and Paula Abdul. Of course, it wasn't all fun and games for Mr. Vanilla Ice, as he would be stabbed five times after getting into a fight outside the club because Vanilla Ice does some gangster shit. Yeah, wow. Soon this musician would release his first single, Play That Funky Music, where it saw limited airplay at radio stations. Yet it would be the B-side track of that album that would ultimately change Vanilla Ice's life forever. A DJ in Georgia, for some reason, decided to flip over that musical old disc thing and play the B-side track called Ice Ice Baby, a track that Mr. Vanilla Ice had written when he was just 16 years old. The song Ice Ice Baby became a huge hit in the state of Georgia, with radio stations across the country quickly picking it up, spreading that Ice Ice Baby fever all over this ice, ice cold world. <laughs> But as it seems to be the case with Vanilla Ice's early success, bad news seems to always follow the good. 
for Vanilla Ice, that bad news would be a scary encounter with the notorious Suge Knight. Mr. Knight wanted Mr. Ice to sign over the publishing rights to his song, which he initially declined several times. Until one night, Suge and another large man showed up at his suite, which was on the 15th floor. And then Suge Knight proceeded to tell Vanilla Ice that he was going to throw him off the balcony unless he signed over the publishing rights to Ice Ice Baby. As we know now, Suge Knight was not joking with this threat, something that Vanilla Ice must have known in the moment because he did, in fact, sign over the rights to the song, which was worth around $4 million. And Suge Knight used that Ice Ice Baby money to fund Death Row Records. There'd be no Death Row Records without Ice Ice Baby. This balcony story became so infamous that, of course, it was probably embellished over the years, and the show Entourage even used it as a plot point when Turtle tried to get into the rap management game. And you just sign him? Sign him. And walked away alive. Next, Vanilla Ice would sign a contract with record label SBK Records, and he would re-record his first album, and give it a fresh new title called To The Extreme. And To The Extreme was released on September 10th, 1990 to middle of the road reviews and wasn't an immediate hit. Yet after a two month buildup of Ice Ice Baby on the radio and the music video being all over that MTV, the album To The Extreme eventually hit the top of the charts where it would remain for 16 consecutive weeks becoming the fastest selling hip hop album of all time. Of course, as the popularity of the new song grew, so was people's familiarity with the underlining music that seemed to be nearly identical to the iconic David Bowie Queen song, Under Pressure. Vanilla Ice would explain that not only is sampling a regular practice in the rap community, but clearly the music was completely different because his song added that extra little bit. Ding, 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 da, da, ding, ding. See, that has that extra It's not the same. It's a completely different song. Yeah. Well, Bowie and Queen thought differently and threatened to sue him for copyright infringement. But the parties ultimately settled out of court with Vanilla Ice saying that he paid $4 million for publishing rights to the song and would eventually give credit to Bowie and Queen for the underlining music. Well, at least the ding 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 part, but not the t that extra t that was all vanilla. The song Ice Ice Baby would go on to be nominated for several prominent awards, including the Grammy Award for Best Rap Solo Performance, while winning the People's Choice Award for Best New Song and the Kids' Choice Award for Favorite Male Singer and Favorite Song. The dude even got nominated for a Soul Train Award for Best R&B Contemporary New Artist. From there, Vanilla Ice would be everywhere. He would start dating Madonna, because that's something you have to do when you get famous. And he even appeared in her controversial book called Sex. I'm not sure what it's about, though. There was a lot of Vanilla Ice merchandise, like dolls and stuff. And he would even appear on Saturday Night Live and would be featured in the now legendary scene in the film Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 The Secret of the Ooze, where he would unleash his next timeless classic called Ninja Rap. Go Ninja Go. Vanilla Ice called working with the Ninja Turtles the coolest time of his life and he decided to take that amazing, mind-blowing performance he gave in that cameo and turn that cameo into a full-blown acting career. Because on October 18th, 1991, Vanilla Ice starred in the film Cool As Ice. This was supposed to be his Purple Rain or his Eight Mile, but it was not. This film Cool As Ice was allegedly a loose remake of Rebel Without a Cause, and it would be absolutely destroyed by the critics, while only making 1.2 million off a reported $6 million budget. This would bring on seven Razzie Award nominations with Vanilla Ice winning Worst New Star. Worst. Even the film's soundtrack 
that featured new music by Vanilla Ice could only manage to top out at spot 89 on the Billboard 200. It would seem that the Vanilla Ice craze had already died down immensely, but he still had his fans, and those fans would turn out for his live performances, which were reportedly highly entertaining with its mix of dance and hip-hop. After nearly three years of non-stop touring, Vanilla Ice needed a break and would go back to his extreme sports roots, competing in jet skiing and motocross. Because yeah, extreme sports is what you do when you need a break. After years away from the public eye, Vanilla Ice would return with a different look, sporting dreadlocks. And he would often talk about his love of Mary Jane. And I don't think he was talking about Spider-Man's girlfriend. It would be at this time, 1994, that he would release his second album, Mind Blowin', which had horrible reviews and didn't even chart on the charts. It was around this time that Vanilla Ice would later admit that he was beginning to experiment with harder drugs, harder than Mary Jane. This included cocaine, ecstasy, and heroin. Vanilla Ice even admits to trying to kill himself with a heroin overdose. But thankfully, his friends revived him. And it was this incident that made Vanilla Ice wake up and change his lifestyle. He would sell his house, take a break from music, and move to Florida, where he would again take up competitive jet skiing. And he eventually became the sixth ranked competitive jet skier in the world. Out of all the jet skiers in the world, Vanilla Ice was number six. It would be at this point in time when Vanilla Ice was trying to distance himself from music and fame. So he decided to enter into the world of real estate and would begin working on renovating and selling houses, becoming quite good at it because he's great at everything he sets his mind to. After a four-year break from creating his own music, Mr. Ice would release his third studio album titled Hard to Swallow. This 1998 album would be a brand new direction for the former hip-hop star. It would feature a more punk rock, heavy metal sound, and would even have a new hard rock version of the iconic track Ice Ice Baby, this time titled Too Cold. Sadly, it would seem that the critics weren't interested as the album received negative reviews, with Maxim Magazine calling it one of the 30 worst albums of all time. The album, Hard to Swallow, would again fail to hit the Billboard charts, despite selling over 100,000 units over time. Vanilla Ice would prove to be more of a stage presence than a musician at this time, and he would use this fame to appear in the Rock and Jock softball game alongside hip-hop artists including Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, and Method Man. While in 1999, a bizarre incident happened when MTV decided to retire his iconic music video for Ice Ice Baby. The peoples at MTV handed him a baseball bat to destroy the Ice Ice Baby music video tape, but instead, Vanilla Ice decided to completely demolish the entire set. And in the year 2001, a DJ would remix Ice Ice Baby, with Mr. Vanilla Ice redoing the vocals for the track. Ultimately, that song, Ice Ice Baby 2001, would become a hit in Europe, giving renewed interest to the artist. Ice would use this renewed interest to begin recording independent music and collaborating with various artists. He says that he simply just has a passion for music, but doesn't want to go back to the level of fame that he had in the early 90s. He liked the artistic freedom that came with being independent. And he didn't really like being famous because, uh, well, being famous, it didn't really work well for Mr. Vanilla. That level of fame wasn't always best for him because, 
Well, like when he was arrested for weapons charges for using a gun to threaten a homeless man who was approaching his vehicle. But of course, that wasn't Vanilla Ice's only run-in with the law because this mf -er is gangster as F. Like in 1988, when he was arrested for drag racing, and in 2001, when he would be arrested for assaulting his then-wife, but he actually didn't do it. The assault charge was eventually dropped down to disorderly conduct after it was revealed that Vanilla Ice had pulled her hair in an attempt to stop her from jumping out of their truck while having an argument on the interstate. He would release his next album, titled Bipolar, in that same year of 2001, which would again fail to impress those critics. And it didn't really impress the fans either, who only bought like 11,000 copies. However, success can be measured in many ways, and for this album, success came by way of its track Unbreakable being used in the popular Dance Dance Revolution 2 game. So, at this point, it would seem that despite being one of the biggest hip-hop artists of all time, Vanilla Ice's continuing music career just couldn't hit anywhere near those same heights. Back in the good old days of the 90s, when civilization peaked, but then came the emergence of celebrity-based reality TV, and Vanilla Ice was like, holy moly, this is perfect for me. And uh, it was. Through the art of reality TV, Vanilla Ice was able to bring his iconic personality directly to the people. He would fight Todd Bridges in a celebrity boxing match, he would appear on Hollywood Squares, as well as the British series The Farm. He was also in that hit reality series The Surreal Life, and he was even in something called Celebrity Bull Riding Challenge, while also appearing in season 23 of Dancing with the Stars. Music may have brought him fame, but it was on the racetrack that always made him the happiest. And Vanilla Ice would get back into motocross, where he placed 7th at the Suzuki Crossover Challenge. Over the next few years, Mr. Vanilla Ice would release a few more albums that never really took off, like Platinum Underground, or a cover album called Vanilla Ice is Back, and OMG, WTF, he has an album called WTF, but it doesn't stand for what the f***, it stands for wisdom, tenacity, and focus. Wisdom, tenacity, and focus happen to Vanilla Ice, is what I always say. But it would be in 2009 when Vanilla Ice would launch his longest running hit yet, when he fused together his star status with his real estate skills and knowledge to launch his reality show, The Vanilla Ice Project, on the DIY Network. Do it yourself. This series would run for nine successful seasons, with 105 episodes produced, and would win several awards. And like everything he does, Vanilla Ice took this real estate reality show to the extreme, cause you know, when you're home renovating, you look to find materials at the cheapest price possible, and uh, he did just that. In February 2015, when Vanilla Ice was arrested for burglary and grand theft after he allegedly stole furniture and a pool heater and other materials from a home that he believed to be abandoned. See, more gangster shit just keeps coming out of Vanilla Ice, y'all. Not that it's good, I'm just, don't, uh, uh, don't do crimes. Vanilla Ice would accept a plea deal and the charges would be dropped after he completed 100 hours of community service. Welcome to a brand new season of the Vanilla Ice Project, showcasing the latest and greatest in home technology and design. Straight from my dome to your home. On the big screen, Vanilla Ice would appear in The New Guy before poking fun at his infamous persona in the Adam Sandler, Andy Samberg comedy, That's My Boy, where he would be nominated for Worst Supporting Actor at the Razzies. It would seem that Vanilla Ice and The Sandman got along famously. Vanilla Ice and Adam Sandler were like BFFs, and he would put them in like all of his movies. Well, not all of them. He, he would put them in The Ridiculous Six as Mark Twain, 
Naturally, Andy was in that Sandy Wexler movie and The Wrong Missy in 2020. <laughs> and that seems to be where we find Robert Van Winkle now, truly embracing who he is and enjoying the benefits of fame that he achieved over 30 years ago. As of 2019, a potential biopic of his life was in development with Dave Franco cast as Vanilla Ice, and it was potentially titled To the Extreme. However, it's been stuck in development hell, pretty much like everything right now. Speaking of right now, right now Vanilla Ice seems to be enjoying a bit of a private life in Florida. Yes, Vanilla Ice has become a Florida man. But unlike many artists throughout the history of music, Mr. Ice is still able to get people on the dance floor decades after his first and only hit. He's a one-hit wonder who always makes us wonder. But seriously, have you ever been at like a school dance, you know, when you were in school and it's like really awkward and nobody's dancing and nobody knows what to do. And then the DJ puts on Ice Ice Baby and it, you know, breaks the ice, Ice Baby. And everybody jumps on the dance floor and suddenly everyone has the best prom ever. And it's all thanks to this gangsta, Vanilla Ice. So yeah. When you break down his life and career, breaking it down like a break dancer, which he was, Vanilla Ice is an acting, rapping, reality show realtor who happens to be an extreme sport champion. And that is as cool as ice. So yeah, nobody should give a f about what the f happened to Vanilla Ice, because he's doing just fine. Word to your mother.